Should we maybe clarify how this came about? Because I don't communicate to anyone from the cast Dom does. Oh, yeah, and let's be honest so with, let's with our listeners as well. About well, that. I could clarify. Yeah. I listen to podcasts. Oh. And I But did thought, you just start listening as of recent when you knew about our recaps? As of recent because, oh, I've actually messaged you guys on Instagram and said love the podcast. That was probably two or three weeks ago. So I listened uh, to the first couple How are maths. you contacting us on Instagram? I don't see it. I wouldn't way. have read it. Oh, everyone has a burner. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah we've all got a burner. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I had one for like so, a week. Um, I was yeah, but she's fucking, you're different, bro. I was like, nah, I don't want to know fucking yeah. shit. You guys left me on red. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I don't. I, did, I don't even uh, it. Unless it was James, it. and maybe I, maybe it was James our, did. Maybe our manager, brought, like yeah. our. Yeah, I'm gonna have a very swiftly worded email for James. When I get <laughs> James, um, Harrison's coming for you. James, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's not Look a fan out. of you either. Um, right? <laughs> I reckon that might change now. We'll so uh, I listened to it, and the one that really struck me was Dom called me a, an effing C, and I was uh, like, "It's like wow. saying I called him a fucking cunt." Yeah, and I was like, "Wow, strong language, right?" Yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Well, that's such a strong opinion," and I thought, "What better way?" way to potentially shift the the conversation around what happened on the show yep. and to the fact that I'm actually not a lot of these things that's just how I was portrayed through the editing process I thought what better way to actually sit down with my two biggest critics mm. and just have an open conversation yeah. like let you say what you want to say mm -hmm. and then have the space to also speak freely on it mm -hmm. and maybe we can come like to some common ground i know we agree on a lot of things i, th I know we agree on the editing mm. i know we agree on the fact that most of the relationship isn't showing mm -hmm. i know that they leave a lot of really important context to you and how you felt in your relationship mm -hmm. out of the final yes. show even though they ask you and all the I time know, how you feel yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i know as well how harsh the public can be yes. as critics mm -hmm. so there is a lot of commonalities that we share it's just about where does the truth lie in mm. what we saw versus what actually happened. Yeah. All I know is that from what I saw on the show, I didn't like the cockiness, the fucking big headed. Mm. So I, I just did not like that because I'm putting myself in to the, like the experiment yet again and thinking, oh, my God, if I was with this guy and he was so up himself and all of this, that that that's just how where my opinion came from, do you know I was what I mean? more, and like yeah. I mean, look when we when we banter on our podcast, um, Dom is known and well loved for her honest opinions, and that's why we love her. You know, and this isn't me and doubling down either. I've still called him. Uh, I'd still say that what I saw, he was being and up even like absolutely. Cunt. And I support that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, and you know, people weren't really sure how this episode was going to go down. And look, we've already been recording for what an hour and. I mean, fuck, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, guys. I, I'm not saying I'm convinced as of yet about Harrison, but I'm enjoying <laughs> the conversation right Me now. Me too. I'm and, you know, I hope that you guys are too because it is, it's been really interesting. Um, we've already had some tears, which... That was a bit random still for me, but anyway. Anytime I talk about my relationship with my son. Yeah. I, like, tears. I can, anytime. I can respect that yeah. because I've got friends that have recently just become parents and the yes. conversations I've had with them is that your kid, you it's will. It's an emotion like, you, that we will never understand. You in on something too. I, I will really only cry in private, like tears crying because I'm a hideous crier. Okay. I have a bad crying face and That's I don't right. want anyone. Me too. And I've had a lot of Botox now, so it's a bit of a Kim Kardashian and face. And I can't move. It's actually, unfortunately, <laughs> the exact same as my cum face, which is. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit of TMI. I don't need to see Harrison, a picture of Harrison in that way. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm fucking dead. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. God. I'm but joking. Look, it's been, yeah, so far, look, it feels like we've still got a bit to cover, okay. but it has been a great, a no, great chat so far. It has been so far, but. <laughs> okay, you want to see me come for Harrison? I'll come for him now because the one thing yeah. I did not fucking like was when he was saying shit about Melinda and yes. her, the plastic surgery. And then obvious, and also fucking Bronte sitting there and agreeing. Bitch, fuck up. So I actually have not. Mm. She's tried to back that yeah. on Instagram with her posts. She's tried to yeah. say, oh, fake laughing. And like, no. Okay, so laughing. you guys need to inform me because Adam only mentioned this to me last night when we were at an event. I'm like, what are you even talking about? So I didn't see this. I didn't see this. We kind of skipped through because look, we're watching these for the recaps, right? And by we're skipping by point, through them at this point. I was point. like, I could not watch <laughs> your and Bronsky's fucking scenes anymore. I was like, I yeah. cannot do this. Skip, skip, skip. I wish the entire show did that. Mm. Yeah, Just but skipped to the end. Unfortunately, <laughs> all we saw was fucking you and uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, um, I did not like that scene where it was like the lowest, lowest of the blows of talking about someone's appearance. Is and this in the their... final? Is this where? Where was? No, this? I, I don't know. I can't remember what I mean, week look, it was, babe. I mean, 
there's two sides to this argument. I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. And I do regret talking about a woman's appearance. So what I did think, you say I to her? I think that that. What did you say? About her. Uh, uh, it was, we were, they were it just was, on the couch. It was actually behind a wake up. You know what we were talking about wake up. So yeah. That's when they come in and film you getting ready. And, all yep. and we'd had a coffee and we were just, the producers are egging the conversation of on. Course, uh, we're right. having a coffee. What people don't realize is the producers want that juice. Of course. Right? So you'll oh, be having yeah. the conversation and a producer will be like, come on, Harrison, like, tell us what you really think. Yeah. Like, this is not, it's, it's not real life. It's not how people really are. It is heavily produced. It's not scripted, but it is a heavily produced production. Yes, but you didn't have to say it. And I'll, I'll, I know. always have a choice and I Correct. always said that as yes. well. I'm, like, I'm getting to that. Yeah. Yep. I'm getting to that. Mm. Um, yes, you do have a choice. Mm. And, I, and on that day, I chose to just let it out. Yeah. Right. And I said a number of comments and unfortunately they played the worst of the worst. I wish right? we had this clip. I haven't seen this. Do we have this uh. clip? No. Oh, we don't. Look, we don't. it was. I made we something don't have about. This clip, which I was fine. making a point about Melinda being fake, and I said, you know, from her, you know, surgeries and all that sort of stuff. And I regret you were saying, this saying to that. Yes. I was saying this it to was Bronte. about the fakeness. Yeah, the word. The fake, point I was yeah. making was that I felt Melinda was being fake in the experiment. Okay, and I chose to align being fake with cosmetic surgery. Right, and I feel like that does cross a boundary. And Melinda, if you're watching, I, you know, I'm sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have said that. And, you know, I'm happy to make a public apology even to yeah. Melinda. But I think that the thing is I'm not above apologizing when I cross a line. I do realize that I do that sometimes and I do slip. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it's about recognizing that behavior and they're not doing it again. You've got to give people an opportunity to grow and change. Well, yeah, of yeah. course. No, I, I agree. And I think this is the – it's a pivotal moment for you to be like, okay – I'm apologizing for all the fucked up things I said. Yeah. For, you know, not. I think know, it's going to be it, harder though for people to. Oh, it is. It's going to be, be hard. harder because we've we've sat and people have watched you for three months. Mm. You know, they they feel like they really know you because mm. we always say whenever we meet fans and listeners on the street, they say we feel like we know you. We say you do know us. You literally just watched us, you know, day in, day out for three months. Like you saw us get emotional, angry potentially fall in love like they saw us so it's going to be hard for I people wish to I sway saw this side of you on the show well yeah i mean maths probably showed well they, they didn't show a lot of that. they didn't show a lot of ella no. because ella. i i was yeah. also protecting my partner on maths a lot i didn't say whatever producers wanted me to say about mitchell i respected yeah. his wishes which was to be private and to do a lot of our relationship in private, which this we was did. the Ella I knew from yeah. the day dot I met her, because we, you know, this is the Ella I know have known since I met her. Yeah, but maths was di was different. Yes, they didn't. Yeah, until I couldn't, a certain point. Yeah, until it towards the end. I just want to point blank ask you this question: <laughs> Do you reject the notion that you have ever manipulated Bronte, and do you stand by that? One hundred percent. No question asked. Yeah, I've never manipulated Bronte. So outright reject that. Like, just that's it. You've heard it out of the horse's mouth. Yeah. Like Bronte admitted it herself. She said, I've never felt manipulated by Harrison. And the only reason she kept bringing it up was because that gave her leverage in the relationship to attack me. She had nothing else. But by that point, she'd run out of excuses for why she was staying, why she was, like, she, she'd run out. that She couldn't use the drama at the wedding anymore. She tries again to bring that up a month after we break up, mind you. Um, she'd run out of, like, any real valid excuses and the funny thing is, um, Bronte's like a bit of a parrot. She would just repeat anything that she hears that's good. She'll use she'll use stuff way out of context. I did notice in yeah. the season that she would repeat and reuse yeah. times. Oh, yeah. fucking nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would like it'd be the same sentence. She said, "You're <laughs> gaslighting me." And it was funny after the when we got good, we were living together, and I said, "Bronte, I just oh, got to ask, um, what does gaslighting mean?" And she mm. she turned to me and she goes, "It's when someone doesn't validate your emotions." And I was like, um, no, Bronte, it's psychological manipulation mm. to get someone to question reality. It's changing facts. It's changing words. It's changing events. And I said, Bronte, you've been doing that from day one. Mm. We would have a fight and you would completely change the context of what the fight was about. You'd change what I said. You would you'd make up entire conversations. And I said, Look, you've been doing that. You've been gaslighting So when she doesn't even one. know the definition of what a gaslighter is and then we hear the leaked voice messages, we see leaked text messages, which we're going to get to. It's evident that she doesn't know. It's evident. I'm going to get you, see that gold box over there? I'm going to get you to pull that over and we've got some questions in there. Does it have Bronte's head in it? It does no. not. What's uh, in the box? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> 
<laughs> We've got some quite juicy questions in here from um, <laughs> our group. Okay. Oh, so these are fans' questions. Yes. <gasps> so we're going to pull Fun. them out. Yeah. <laughs> so get going. Okay. Come on, mate. We're making you work even though you're not getting paid here. <laughs> it's, this is this is like the um, sit with us equivalent of celebrities read mean tweets. Exactly. Well, yeah, pretty much. It's like we fucking hate you, Harrison, but we want to know this shit. Uh, die, die. Fucking die. Oh, no. That's not, no, no, that's no. not what it says. That's not what it says. No, okay, what it, here we go. Um, um, <laughs> love to know, what is something that Harrison knows was not aired but wish it would have been aired that made him more relatable, if anything? Made him more relatable. Yes. What um, would have made you more relatable? Good okay. Uh, I think one thing that was aired that made me more relatable was, um, I'll give two examples, one that was aired and one that wasn't. One thing that was aired that made me more, more relatable was when I took my wedding photo on a date. Oh, People that, saw, We hated that. Uh, I was like, mate, this fucking Samara. We yeah. fucking hate yeah. him yeah. out of here. But, Do you but know how know many people he's... came up to me on the street after that aired and were like, bro, that was hilarious. It's a very like, specific type of humour and I get now yeah. after but meeting yeah. him. Course, yes, funny, I understand it now. Funny from someone who's on the street walking by but not funny when we're viewers watching what's been happening. Well, you think that I've just had this huge conflict with Bronte and now I'm out taking the yes. piss out of it, Yes, right? that's why. That's it was like why. a week went by and I was sitting in an apartment on my own going stir crazy. So, like, just cut me some slack. Okay, yeah. now something and we didn't see that would have made you more relatable. Oh, I think even so just many. hearing think, this conversation. I think, um, yes. I think the biggest thing that made me would have made me quite relatable was um, if they'd showed Bronte's meltdown at the go-kart track and mm. then my Voxy after I did a few hot laps with the drone was out. It's really cool. Aww, and then I'm, I'm giving this, this I'm giving this interview and I'll I'll hold a prop. Hold on. I'm giving this interview and I'm sort of standing there with my like my helmet here and I had yeah. the sunnies on and I was like, yeah, you know, I entered the first turn and I realized my biggest competition was actually with myself. And I was just oh giving this God. totally sarcastic, idiotic interview. And oh. I wish they played it because it was like so Ron Burgundy-esque, you know. It was it was just Talladega oh Nights. God. It was hilarious. That I wish great. they played it. I really wish they played but it. No, um, but no, they didn't. They didn't have that out for you. Sorry, um, but yeah. no, you're a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next yeah. question. Yeah. They're so long. I know. Uh, well, we, we'll get through them. Yeah. Will he ever seek out actual professional psych evaluation or assessment to even acknowledge or be self-aware enough to acknowledge his narcissistic personality traits? Interesting question. Interesting very question. Very interesting question, but also um, very fully loaded. I actually have, you know. I actually have. Oh. Since watching the show, I actually have. Um, one of my best mates is a professional psychologist. Okay. And he's seen me, obviously, on screen and in real life. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're best mates. And I said, look, Paul, um, I've got to level with you here. You know, I'm getting a lot of these accusations and I just want to know, like, do you in your professional opinion think that I'm There's a narcissist? Wrong with me. Yeah. And he's my friend. So he's going to see me like behind the scenes, like yeah. my real life. Yeah. Right? And, um, and I know like people will argue, oh, he's your friend. He's never going to come on. He's like, I'm asking for his unbiased professional yeah. opinion here. So give the guy some credit. Right. And he said, mate, he's like, look, first of all, narcissism, it's on a spectrum. Some nice. people are some people are just like yeah. have a strong ego and other people yeah. are like full blown behavioral disorder. Mate, CEOs yeah. of big companies are all narcissists. Well, there's right? interesting studies showing that they align quite a bit with psych Psychopa uh, psych psychopaths. Socio Sociopaths. Socio Sociopaths. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um and he said, Look, he said, like, mate, you in real terms, you're like the mild end. He's like, you know, you've you've got a bit of a you know, got high self esteem, you're driven, you've got yes. an ego. Mm. ego. He's like, but you're ego. not you're not uh you, you showed a lot of empathy on the show. Even though they they twisted it and made a joke out of the endometriosis thing, mm. that's real empathy. When you look at your relationship with your son, that's love. Mm. He's like, narcissists do not possess the ability to do that. The reason they're narcissists is because they don't have that side of their personality. They can't tap into emotions or empathy for other people. So he's like, by definition, you're not at this, the severe end of the spectrum. Yeah. I'm actually really enjoying this. Thank you so much. No, for it's that. great. This no. is fun too, right? Good, good. Okay, so I'll add speed round. Yeah, speed yeah. round, go. Why are you such a cunt? Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, go. Oh, no, I was um, actually going to uh, write a question being like, <laughs> how many pairs of ripped jeans do you own? All of I, them. I, and I'm wearing ripped um, jeans right now. But like, I, the, oh, all no, of them. Okay, good. Nick, yep. Uh, tell us what was edited out about Lyndall, Claire, and Bronte. Pff, I don't have the time. Um, okay, speed round. Uh, Lyndall was emotionally cheating on uh, Cam, from what I've heard, with Hugo and then later on with Josh. And then she had a full-time boyfriend that she went back to after the show. 
All hearsay, cannot confirm. I wasn't there. This is just what I've heard. Claire definitely dragged out the relationship for airtime 100%. Mm -hmm. Wanted the redemption arc. She ended up getting it. Mm -hmm. Good for her. It doesn't discount that you you cheated on one of my close friends um, and, and you gaslit him and you made him feel crazy. And for that, I mm -hmm. will never forgive you. Also, yeah, Claire, <laughs> I don't know. People oh, and think Bronte. That... We've, we've covered Yeah, Bronte. Yeah. Yeah. Even... Just, just typed in Bronte. Bronte leaked onto Google and you will see what wasn't showing. Also, about. can I just yeah. say something um, really quickly, Harrison? Bronte is going to be real cut that you're on our podcast and not her because I've heard that she's a very big super fan and um, at times said that she wanted to be the next Dom mm. um, and thought that she got mm. mine and Jack's apartment and thought that that would automatically make her some, I don't know. So congratulations. I think you're winning here, Harrison. Just mm. want to, yeah. I feel like I'm winning. Good. Oh, God. sitting down with you guys. <laughs> How could I not? How could you not? Uh, is he being also, a smart or you're is real? starting a lawsuit. Tell us about it. Uh, well, we uh, can't talk about legal I stuff, guys. Um, I won't sit by and let people slander me. Yeah, I won't. We can talk more about I this actually right now. I won't sit by yeah. and let someone make derogatory and defamatory statements. And I just yeah. want to make a broad statement on okay. this that yep. anyone that lies about domestic violence or any abuse yep. to gain sympathy or attention should be shamed, mm -hmm. should be absolutely ashamed of themselves. Mm -hmm. I and agree. that behavior needs to be called out. Yeah. And what kind of precedent would I set for my son if I showed him a father or a man that would sit by and let this happen, I wouldn't let it happen to a woman and mm. I'm definitely not going to let it happen to me. Mm. I've stood up for myself through the entire show and this being here today is a form of standing up for myself. Mm. Yeah. So that's who I am and mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit idly by while people make up just absolutely outrageous lies outrageous and get away claims. with it. Does it blow your it. mind? I mean, obviously before going on to maths, we all have no idea what is going to be waiting when the show is done, right? We have got absolutely no idea. Now that it's nearly over and so much of this shit's come out, all these accusations, whatever they may be, does it blow your mind? Did you like honestly have no idea that all of this? What blows my mind is that this kind of, how do I put it? What blows my mind is that this niche podcaster thinks she's mm. broken this story months after the fact and it never got mentioned up till now. And she's all of a sudden broken this big story on, you know, domestic violence on the set of Married at First Sight. Do you think this could happen ever? So the accusation Fuck is no. Fuck no. I just want to put that out there and say, fuck no. I would never have given four months of my life to anything that would have put me in any form of danger oh, no that way. I didn't feel safe, no. that was controlling, that would lock me in a room. No. Number one, they it's cannot an apartment. lock you in a room. It's a hotel. You, you can't, can't leave. You can't they can't lock. even lock the doors. No. You can't lock a door. No. So number one, don't fuck up. Don't don't lie, bro. Yeah. I can't stand liars. Okay. Yeah. So don't say you could be locked in a room. I would never ever allow myself in a situation mm -hmm. where I would be locked in a room no way. or forced to be in a room by anyone. Yeah, they tell you to wait in a room. Yes. <laughs> wait, and, and they to take be... our phones yeah. and yeah. they give it to a house AP down the hall. You can yes. get it back anytime yeah. you want. Yes. Relax. If you wanted to, Dale, you could have walked out and gone down Pitt Street and fucking got a caught a cab somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so don't does production me. does production try and talk you into staying in your relationship. Well, 100% they do. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But, that's but it's up still to voluntary. You. But you guys the, were yeah. also more yeah. Spot free. On, no. Spot on. You guys were also more free of doing whatever you wanted than us. We were in lockdown. Yeah. We, yeah, we actually about that. couldn't what leave. What was that experience hey, like Bronte, being in lockdown? Like, hey, Bronte, <laughs> and I'll say this. locked down. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. We actually <laughs> yeah. had actual lockdown, lockdown because it was COVID, COVID. rampant, right? Mm. And we actually did have – at. The first three weeks of the experiment, first two or three weeks, we did have an, a security guard that was on our level mm. of the apartment because they didn't want to let other people come into our floor because, because we were fully quarantined. Sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we were fully quarantined. Do not sit here, Bronte, and release these sources and mm. claims. Uh, it boils my blood. Mm. All right. You could have left whenever you wanted. Yeah, producers can kind of put things in your ear and get you to say things, but at the end of the day, it comes out of your mouth. But and also, you choose to do whatever you correct. choose. You have the choice. You don't have to stay in your room. We physically could not leave to go for a walk without approval, and we were only allowed to go outside for an hour. And also wow. for a walk. Wow. And I, <laughs> yes, like, like that's 20, it. 23 hours I've, of the day we were in that apartment. I Harrison. think when she's um I think when she's referring to production won't let me like go home to see my grandmother or whatever. 
you've got to remember they've got filming schedules. Exactly. So they might have held her for two days while they did a dinner party or a commitment ceremony yes. because those like you've you've you're obliged you've in signed your a contract. contract to do those things. But Bronte went home. So when I got to Perth, Bronte had already been there for like four or five days. They let her go early to be with her family. As in homestays? Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She was the only one that went to got like got to go home early because of the situation with her grandmother. Oh. So like this whole like crybaby poor me thing, yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah. They let her go. They let her out of filming. We were supposed to do two days after the dinner party of actuality. Mm. Should they let her go home early? I sat around the apartment for two or three days before I got the flight to Perth. Their so, season was a lot more lenient. There was a lot of people leaving dinner parties, leaving oh commitment my ceremonies. God. Can we I just say one last that. thing? One yeah. last thing. This is the most important for me. It's the complete lack of evidence for the claims because oh, out of all yeah. the shit she's leaked to the media, never once a mention of coercive control, this guy's intimidating me, I feel trapped by him, he's violent. Um, you know, I feel like I'm in a domestic violent relationship. Also, There's also security guys, guards. None of the claims ever got leaked. Nothing, Endemol no Shine, evidence for it. Can I just say something? Endemol Shine, yeah. Channel 9 would never, ever have let anyone doing no. those kind of behaviours nope. on the show. Look at Simon no. Blackburn, gone, see They would make first an week. example of that person. 100%. Yeah. And I think as well, some I, I've read through, um, which I should never read the comments because it's a dumpster fire of opinions <laughs> in there, but a few people have said, well, he might not have been violent, but there's many different tom- uh, forms of abuse. And I agree, mm. right? But it's funny, like, um, I actually had a conversation with one person in, in a comment thread, and I said, well, if you take the end product of the show, it looks like it definitely borderlines on some abusive behavior. And, and I, I totally accept that because you're not seeing both sides of the argument. But if you go back and watch the show now, based on all of the leaked information that's come out, you can clearly see who the manipulative one is. You can clearly see who mm. the one is being gaslit in the show. Mm. And it, it, I am not the one being, I'm not the one manipulating Bronte. If it's we, the other way around. If yeah. we had all of the leaked voice messages yeah. and the text messages prior to the show starting, mm. I think it would have it been would be a very, very different. different season. Very different. Uh, it would be very, she very, She would have got different. more dragged than she has. Like, I feel like, um, and it's unfortunate that I feel like the women of, of my season have really not had to take accountability for anything like um the leaked voice notes and the leaked text messages about her plans to end the experiment and then all of these claims since like where is the blowback where is the public going if if the shoe was on the other foot right mm-hmm. if i'd leaked these voice notes if i'd leaked these text messages um if if i was if if um if i was the one uh, having genuine claims about this stuff made to me mm. I guarantee you now I'd be moving countries mm. like and changing my name. But I just feel like the, the women of this season have got off scot-free with a lot of the stuff that happened either off camera or even the stuff that happened on camera. They got very soft edits. I I don't agree fully yeah. on that because I, I think of women like Melissa and Alyssa. Both mm. of these women I think have got the short end of the stick. Like I understand that that Melissa said a lot of things about Josh that I don't agree with yeah. and I and I and I've actually I've spoken to her and I've told her that mm. and she understands that. Alyssa, I don't think we're seeing the story at all there. I think there's a lot more there's going lot. on behind the scenes. A lot of scenes. context you don't see. A lot yeah. of context and I personally think there Duncan's getting the I don't the think she's Mr. getting a bad edit though. I disagree because okay. Alyssa whilst their relationship is being affected by these issues, yeah. you're still seeing her talk on it. You're still seeing her side of that story. I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't agree. get that opportunity. I never got that afforded to me. Okay. In fact, I've had a lot of my stuff completely erased, completely not okay. shown to the public. Mm. So, so you're w- seeing her emotions. That's what you're saying. So you get to see her emotions. Whereas and you her explanations see- for okay. why. Okay. She's saying, you know, I have these doubts in this relationship and an and issue around prioritizing Duncan because I do have a child. Right. Mm. And those things, like as a single parent, completely empathize with her situation. Mm. And there's a lot of people out there that there's a lot of people out there that are taking shots at that. There is a much larger majority of people out there that are supporting Alyssa and what she went through and giving up that time Mm. to be on the show for a guy she's not sure about. And I think that that is fair to their relationship. Do I think she's going to get all of the context her way? No, it's a TV show. Mm. But at least she's been given that platform and that opportunity where on the show we're hearing why she's going through that. Mm. Um, Josh, a lot of opportunity to talk on why his his issues are in the relationship, uh, even Duncan. Uh, if I look at Leighton and Melinda's relationship, um, whilst I don't see – a lot of like they fought like cats and dogs the whole time right Mm -hmm. we don't see any of that we just see them breaking down at commitment ceremonies and then sort of gets blamed on me Mm -hmm. well 
their their relationship was like very rocky, right? But you see them both communicating yes. on that issue. Yes. You do not see that in my relationship. Yeah. You completely see the entire relationship through Bronte's lens. And that is something that I will forever be resentful to the network for. Yeah. Wow. That I mean, was, that was a well, hard hitting moment. Wow. Well, that, that was, that's, yeah. I mean, look. Honesty. Do you yeah. want one last? No, no, no. I've actually got a, well, a very okay. special question, actually, oh, yeah. uh, from a very special someone. So oh, I think yes. we need to play that, Darcy, if possible. Hey, Harrison. It's your friend, Josh. Uh, I'm really interested in this question. Um, I've seen a lot of feedback online about when people reveal that they're friends with you, specifically the guys, and the audience kind of takes a bit of an issue with that. Um, so I'd just really like you to kind of answer that. Who are you friends with? Why are you friends with them? When did you become friends? Uh, and kind of just add commentary on that way. I, I think that that would be really interesting to know and learn about as an audience. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Joshy. <laughs> there is absolutely no way I'm going to be able to talk about this without getting emotional, just to preface this. Aww. There are so many moments that happened on the show that... Um, like with the boys? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. support it isn't of showing. the boys? It isn't showing. Okay, yep. Um, How do I also, get this out? So there's a real I, boys club vibe. There's, there's a, a real bro code, man. Bro code. Yeah, but not on the Jeez. show as much. It oh, was more. Oh, we dude. could see it. Dude. <laughs> and we're going to get to the phone thing. We're yeah. going to get to like all of that. You don't really see the guys jumping in to have my back. A lot of the guys um, on like, you know, the guys I was really close with, you know, Duncan, Cam, Dan, Josh. Um, De Dirty uh, Jesse, dog Dan. Jesse, Dan. Yeah. Uh, even Adam. Like we're, we're good friends now. Um, we're all in a group chat together. We all communicate daily. So there, there is a bit of a boys club, but a lot yes. of that actually formed like after the show. But that okay. was like our right? season. But all the, the boys had their group yes. chat. They yeah. all were catching up. I mean, yeah. look, you have to. You all went yeah, through something exactly. together, right? I, I get that. You're in the I trenches that. together. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so the moments that you do see captured on camera really capture the essence of our friendship, and that is that we, in the moments that we needed each other most, we had each other's backs. And um, I saw that with Josh and I saw it with Jesse where when Jesse came to me at the wedding and told me. Um, Which wedding? Jesse came to me at the wedding of um, Taylor and Taylor, Hugo. Yeah, right, yeah. And he told me about uh, his thing with Claire. People thought that I was like smirking because mm. I was happy. That you were happy. I was happy for him because he finally had the explanation the truth that he'd been looking for yeah and um because they were uh, they were making him out to be like a crazy crazy yeah, fucking yeah. fucking yeah. like ex-girlfriend who were who like were, jealous insecure i hated that but that we knew we sick. were like we, we were both like no we think that there's got to be truth behind this I know. and it mm. will come oh. out and we were like it's gonna come out there was and a they moment, made you um, look like a fucking yeah you were like, there was a moment where you don't see on camera that was probably the most powerful moment in the experiment for me was where um, Jesse was on the couch and John was just going at him constantly. He's like, well, if you didn't attend the dinner party, would you still have written leave? You know, do you think Harrison's Harris, ruined your yeah. relationship? And this was after like a 10 minute tire, you know, absolutely bashing the poor bloke mm. and uh, sitting there watching this. And Jesse said, don't blame Haz. He's, he's a bit like, he said, don't blame Haz. He's been like a brother to me. Oh, that's... And um, in that moment, I was like, that's that's real strength. Yeah. He showed real fucking strength in that moment. And um, that strength, I just I just did not have, you know, I, I really struggled whenever I went into those fucking commitment ceremonies yeah. to really hold my ground and stay true to myself. Mm. And, you know, you, you get a lot of pressure from production. I think a lot of guys from the experiment. feel that because yeah. I know yeah. Mitchell, like my, he, as soon yeah. as we sat on that couch... He could not be. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, there's guys, a lot of I, moments that you don't see on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Where the I want to back that really up. Yeah. Had about each other's backs. You know? Yeah. About that's the, the friendship. Yeah. That was the friendship. Yeah. 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 The commitment ceremonies, guys, are really intense. And we've said this before. They go for like eight yeah. hours, dude. And like you mm. see one minute of each relationship. Yeah. They and go seeing for hours. your mate, and like you do build relationships. Yeah. yeah like I mean, I I think of you know. Ella seeing me on the couch mm. breaking down after the photo thing, like you fucking had my back. You were yeah. like, "Don't you don't sit there and." But they and they didn't air any of that. No, yeah. they didn't no. air any. It's a shame of, because and, that would have been a good story. Yeah. Yes. But again, anything that showed that I'm 
have a depth to me was edited out because you can't have a villain if they're three dimensional. You kind of only, you can really only hate someone if they're one dimensional. If you show that they have an incredible depth or that they're funny or that they're likable, people don't tend to hate them so much. If you look at any mm. real great film, the thing that makes Bond villains so great mm. is that they're all charismatic and they know that they're evil and they're kind of doing it with like this cavalier sort of yeah. um, sarcasm. Mm. Like, oh, come and catch me if you can, Bond. Yeah. Mm. Those make a great villain and people love them. It's almost like sometimes people cheer them on. Mm. This show doesn't do that. They don't want that. They want people throwing shit at their television. They want people fired up and getting mm. into the comment section. If people liked me and saw me for who I really am, I don't think that the show would have, or me on the show would have had any real impact like I have mm. for the viewer. See, I think of a villain, right, and back mm. to our season, you know, if if people are going to label Olivia the villain, mm. I think I can't compare, I can't see Olivia next to you and think, no. okay, because she's never owned up for anything or apologised for any of her wrongdoings. And also I have to say I think what she did was far worse than anything that people are accusing you of doing. I just want to put that out there. I agree. Fucking big time. Yeah. Um, and that's not just because it happened to me. That's no. f It's fucking because she really did break the law and she's mm. never apologised for it. She's never owned up for it. You've, even on the show, I feel like you owned up for your shit, even mm. if it was in a smart-ass way, in your own way, I do think that you did actually do that, all right? So I just want to put that out there. Mm. And I want I want people to know that, mm. okay? Well, people saw it. I saw it. We, we all, you yeah. always took accountability. And that's just not because he's sitting here and he's, like, breaking down and actually being emotional. That's actually what I've seen. Yeah. And I know people are going to come for me and be like, oh, you're fucking, you know. Look, we can't make everyone happy on this platform and we've always said that in general with since we've become public yeah. figures, you guys are never going to agree with everything that we say yeah, or do. And and people are going to say, oh, well, you know, you should do the same thing with, with Olivia. No, the difference with Olivia big time, if we're going to call Harrison a villain as well, mm. is that she never owned up to anything mm. she did. She never apologised. She fucking, and still to this day, is, is horrible and fucking going for it. Whereas you, you've actually owned up for it and you're like, yeah, no, I I did do that. I was an asshole. I've I've got a big ego. This this is me. But you've owned up for your shit, right? So that's Thank where you. you're different. And, and we've also spoken about that's this. where villains are different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't see her as a victim at all. I see her as a full villain. I can see that, and I don't even like that. And it, it discredits the word victim as well, by the mm. way, because. It just, I don't know, a lot of the language used this year really just discredits real people going through real, real fucking things, shit, man. Yeah. Like you guys, you're in a TV show, you're on a product, you're on a fucking film set, okay? Yeah. Mm. It's not reality at the end of the day. Well, like this, like if I felt like, um, if I felt like you guys were threatening me, I could just get up and walk out and go on yeah. with exactly. my day. Exactly, right? exactly. The maths is no different. Mm -hmm. The door is always open. Yeah. They yes. say, they say, you yeah. can leave you can anytime. Leave. They say you it can all ask the time. for help. Yeah. We have regular check-ins with yeah. people. Thank you. So there's absolutely no way that anything nefarious or illegal could mm -hmm. happen on the Mate, set. Mate, you filmed maps. that much. Did yeah. you Nothing. ever, did you take up the sessions with Teresa? Did you have Teresa? Well, they or have did... different help every year for, okay. uh, you know, away for the cast private, privately, like mental health help. Yes, yeah, yes, they yes, have, yes, they yes, have different yes. people every year. Yeah, yeah. Um, this year the support staff has been incredible. I personally haven't used them. Yeah. I've continuously said, you know, I want you to check on this person. I want mm. you to check on that person based on conversations I've had. So, again, yep. like having my mate's backs. But um, I've never really felt the need to. You know, because again, like I've, I've watched the show and I'm just like, that's not what happened. Like, mm. I actually just feel disappointed. I you feel, know, in I feel yourself. cheated. I feel yeah. cheated. Yeah. yeah. So it's not, it's not like, um, yeah. it's not like I watch the show and go, oh, fuck, like I really, you know, um, I've got to, I've got to answer for that. There is a bit of that. Like, I'm happy yeah. to take on a bit of that. Like yeah. you were saying, like, take the responsibility yeah. mm. for some things. But watching the show, I'm like, man, that's so fucking edited. Mm. Let's like, bring you back down to earth a little bit and yeah. keeping it real. The photo, the phone number, oh sorry, gosh. photo. I'm fucking thinking, geez, photo. That just, that triggers me. Um, <laughs> the, the, phone num the phone number scandal, mm. okay? And I know Dan's your friend, but, but I want to fucking know the real yeah. nitty gritty. Let's just see the clip and then we're going to get into it, yeah. Harrison. Hey, Janelle overheard me telling Adam yeah. about those girls on Saturday night. And I, I just told them that we deleted their numbers as soon as we walked off. Yeah. So there's nothing more to the story. 
Yeah. For me, I leave a number done for you. I said the same thing. I oh, mate, oh, I didn't even take that number, so I wasn't fine. Yeah, yeah. Harrison, okay. you know he took a number. Of course. Come on, come on. I know he took a number, bro. We know he took a number. Dirty dog, I know he did. Dirty Dan the dog. Give it to me. Dan got a number. Yes, we knew it. We we knew it. Right? We knew I was it. I saw your Dan. face, bro. Yeah. I watched him put it in his phone. It happened, but. The thing about being Own someone's it, mate, the thing about being someone's mate is you take hits for them. Yep, and you fucking and took, took that hit. I took mate. a hit for da- for Dan. I, I I got called a liar on national television, for, and I told the for truth. For that dipshit. Sorry. Now, did I tell the truth straight away? No, and mm. I own that. Yep. I own that part. Yep. Mm. I didn't want it to come out. I did yep. not want it to come out. But oh. I did. I did tell the truth about the events that happened when okay. I got put under pressure. I was okay. like, no, this happened. We got numbers. Um, you did, and I'll give you that. I'll mm. give you that. What I didn't like was you went out there and I and I honestly, I saw two friends. This mm. is what I saw, Harrison. I saw two friends walking out there and I saw the way you looked at him and you wanted him to say to you there to justify it to mm-hmm. you. Yeah, that di- I did take it, but what are we going to do? Yeah, but I, look, I saw that as that what was what yeah. was happening. Pre-planning Dan, a bit Dan, there. And amongst the boys. Um, He's a fucking dirty dog. Yeah, we don't he like is. him. Uh, look, amongst the boys, Dan's nickname is Denial Dan. Fuck. Because mm. Dan's default is to, and Dan, look, I love you, bro. Like we're 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 good mates. We're 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 very very good mates. So you know look, this I'm doesn't sure affect our friendship. Somewhere but, there, there's a good bloke. I'm yeah. sure uh, deep down. But, um, I don't know. I need look, to edit the, that into Dan's, a TikTok. Dan's dust, natural so Dan's natural response to to really any blowback is to deny, and that's fine. Mm. Like, look, being someone, and this is why people couldn't work out why they'd like be my friend or I'd be friends with mm. Adam or anything like that. Yes. Being someone's friend isn't about being their friend when they're doing well. Being someone's friend is about being there for them when they fall. Mm-hmm. Because how is someone supposed to learn if you aren't there to pick them up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah, and I've I been agree. there. I've been there for a lot of stuff that you don't see on the show where people fall, and mm-hmm. I've been there for yep. them, and I will continue to do that yep. because this is truly the best group of guys I've ever had the privilege of calling a friend. Mm. I appreciate now, that and I, yeah. and I respect that, Harrison, because yeah. I'm respecting that you're sitting here and you can say, yeah, Dan, you did, you did yeah. take the number, but yeah. also. But I'm- I wasn't going to let, I wasn't going to let that ruin his relationship. So I took the hit so that his relationship could have a chance. And unfortunately it, he blew it, but. But yeah. also I'm not convinced Dan was not into Sandy. No, he ch- he's told you that. He's yeah, told you like, that on screen. He, I know. He just what like so just, even you how saving you say, the relationship. How do you say I'm not into you and then leave without then, looking like an asshole? But even you then taking the hit for Dan, like at that point we knew Dan was not into Sandy. We knew that. Just bro, so like it was like, dude, you're you not doing anyone any favors. We would have respected you more if you just said, Sandy, I'm really not into you. Instead of, yeah, let's keep playing and it leading out to try and see mm. leading. I personally think leading someone on is the is worst worse thing than to do. fucking just being like, I'm yeah. not into you. Yeah, but you've you have you have got to remember that Sandy's not innocent in that. Sandy said to Dan, I know we're not into each other, but I kind of want to stay in this. You know, I've I've oh. making so it was it did wasn't she really all, like don't he... put all of this on Dan. No, Dan Dan was over at my apartment quite a bit behind the AP's back. Oh. And we would sit we there and knock tell. back. They we, were never in the apartment together. Let's be honest. Yeah, guys. we would knock Come back on. a wine. Yeah, but Sandy wasn't like at night time. That was Sandy's time. She'd be out doing stuff, and Dan would be asleep. So, see, I don't like, understand this. It's just it, people but, have to stop putting everything onto one person in the relationship. There's two people in the relationship. They're fifty percent of the relationship. They are fifty percent of the blame. And the difference between me and my partner is I own my fifty percent of my bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Dan, Dan, kind of owns his stuff, not all of it, but his stuff. Sandy doesn't own any of her shit. It's just all Dan's an asshole. Dan was never into me. Victim, victim, victim. It's like, no, Sandy. Um, Dan wanted an active outdoor partner Mm. and you never tried to be that person for him. You sat there and you'd be in your jammies until 1 p.m. and then you'd be like, why is he not into me? Mm. Like, come on, he's telling you what he wants in a partner. Like he was he was the trying ocean. to, yeah. He wants the, the ocean. ocean. Yeah, he, wa- he wants a marine animal. Um, he wants a marine animal <laughs> yeah. and I'm thinking killer whale. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, we, like, we well, you know, blowhole and Sandy. it could happen. If you, could, yeah. Look, <laughs> we didn't see anything like that about Sandy. Like we didn't know that she was saying him. In and I don't again. Either. I don't want to bash the women no. of the show. Like yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not bashing Sandy. That is her life choices. Yeah. Of what she's comfortable in. 
And that is fine. Of and course. like you will find someone that will love you for who you are. Yeah. It just will. wasn't Dan. Yeah. And the point of the show isn't for people to have amicable breakups. No, yeah. it's the not. point of the show exactly. is to dramatize the stupidest, most insignificant thing mm. because it makes interesting storylines and people can have their two cents on it. Mm. So Dan was never going to exit the show looking like a good guy. No. I right? still see- He's a dipshit is okay, that, in my eyes. Yeah. I will say that. And, and that's fine. We were allowed to have differing opinions. Yeah. Harrison, we're allowed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. But what I just don't understand is that he was never into her, bro. It was never going to work. And also he started mm. acting out so yes, heavily, so breaking heavily. all the rules because he knew that something was coming when he yeah. got parked on the beach with that chick. Exactly. And then a week later it was oh, like. Oh, Dan went into uh, damage control as soon as he got off the show. But yeah. the damage control was not good it damage was not control, good. doll. It was not good damage control. Well, it was well, like, oh, shifted gonna... the narrative. You got to give him that. Huh? The guy's Did been it... in, the guy's been in marketing for like twenty five years. Did it years. shift the narrative I though? Because I anything. think it made him look like more like a dipshit. Like he didn't give a shit about Sandy's feelings. Yeah, that's how I saw it. Yeah, but anyone, all anyone was focused on was her tits for the last six Who? weeks. The G, the yeah. G double G's. We've called yeah. it double G's. Double, double G's. Yeah, that's all anyone was talking about. So I mean, you got to give the guy credit. Did he motivate the double G's? Work. Is he actually with her? I mean, I guess so. Does he have a girlfriend? Tell me. Uh, I think he... Dan's single at the moment. Okay. So, oh, you think you know, he's single at the moment? What, fucking what, for one week? He's in, ba- he's in Bali at the moment. I spoke to him yesterday and he's he's, li- he's loving life. Motorboating he in Bali. He was telling me about how he's in like got caught up in some festival and nearly got trampled and it sounds wild. Interesting. I'm jealous. I wish I kind of went over there with he, him. Yeah, I mean, he does sound a bit wild. He does. Look, yeah. there is he's a... He's got a 15-year-old okay, kid. Uh, like, mate, I, she'd be seeing oh, shit. How, how, do I, um, how do I put this? Um... You've seen a side to Dan. Okay. I spent uh, Christmas Eve Eve with Dan and his mm-hmm. family. So the, the day before Christmas that. Eve, right? I respect yeah. that. And I saw I was sitting by a pool and I was hanging out with Dan's family and I saw him as a father, mm. completely different person. Okay. Mm. So don't, again, you're seeing a one-dimensional yeah, yeah. character no, on I the show. I respect that. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Do you think now he regrets, and I know, like, obviously you're not Dan, you're, you're his mate, but mm. do you think Dan regrets going on the show now considering he's exposed his 15-year-old teenage daughter to, I guess, a his, shitstorm of, of himself and, and his behaviours? And his behaviours, yeah. Um, it's a great question that? because I've got to answer the same question for my son. Well, true. Yeah. Um, I, yes, and your child is younger um, and doesn't have access to the internet as readily yeah, and all yeah, that. yeah. I still make him watch it, though. No, I'm kidding. Fuck, I was going to say, Chico. I'm not, we're not putting on Shrek. We're watching Matt. I was going to throw these fucking cards at you, okay? Stop crying. We're watching it. Um, oh, my God. God, fuck, and, I'm uh, going to throw these at yeah. you. This is how you gaslight. No. Um, oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Uh, I think. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, <laughs> Shut up. Are you seeing a different side to me now? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. This is my know. sense of humour. I know, but um, seriously, do you think he regrets okay, it? Because so, she's 15. No, she's it's not who teenager. he is. It was five minutes on a highly produced TV show that's highly edited, everything produced, situations aren't normal. If you, If I invited either of you to another maths dinner party and said your relationship's in turmoil and the entire fucking... You know, all of the people at that table want to ask you questions about it. Would you go? Joel, we've done it. We've been no, there. W- would you go now? Oh, yeah. Fuck no. No. Thank no. you. Yeah. It's not normal. No one would sit there and voluntarily go through oh, that shit. No. But you can't no. leave. Okay. But, okay. Right? It's, well, it's produced. It's bullshit. People ask, need to realise it's a show. Yeah. We're going to ask you about this, but I want to know, regarding Dan, if Dan can get double G in the real world, why the fuck did he go on Married at First Sight? Look, uh, probably a lot of the same reasons I went on it. And we'll get and yeah, well, we'll then get what was, yeah. why did you go on Married at First Sight, Harris? Well, Dan and I are actually very similar. Because uh, you in, had a girl in your bed the night before, right? Not the night before. No, I cut everything off about, pff, I would say, three or four days before I okay. went. So it wasn't really, a night before, yeah. it was so three really or four look, days. It's still that not an appropriate no amount difference. of time. <laughs> yeah. One or two yeah. days before, you were packing yeah. your bags with the girl you were sleeping you were with. It shows a little bit of commitment. <laughs> yeah, right. You were still relatively still in your fuckboy stage. Literally you? the Absolutely. day before. So Absolutely. Did you apply for the show? No, no, I got approached. I got a message on Instagram and I, I didn't want to do it. I was oh. shooting for The Bachelor. I didn't want to go on maths. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in talks with, I'd been approached for The Bachelorette like a few years before. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was in talks about The Bachelor and that's when they're like, oh, we're going a different direction this year. We've kind of had like the Lockie Gilberts and we've had like the guys, you know, the brunette guys with beards. We're going like, you know, um, Machine Gun Kelly. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I think the ratings really speak for themselves with that decision. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, no hate, um, don't come for me, Machine Gun Kelly. Um, 
I think, uh, I think <laughs> that when I got approached for maths, you know, I spoke to friends and family about it and I was like, well, you know, I mean, the opportunity I was shooting for, it's kind of not happened and will it ever happen? And if I don't do this now, I might always wonder whether or not the love of my life was on the other side of this opportunity. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, you know, if it doesn't work out, I'll be famous. Mm -hmm. So there's always, and anyone that says that that's not. Or a, infamous. A, yeah. Anyone mm -hmm. that says that that's not a serious consideration for going on Australia's number one reality TV show yeah. is mm -hmm. fucking lying. Fucking influences. We've got TikTok influences and shit. Do you I really think they were there for love? Who? Janelle. What I'm saying is that everyone that went on the show wanted to get something out of it. Especially and it wasn't this year. just love. Especially Don't fucking this season, lie about though. that to anyone. It's definitely just this season, I feel. I feel no. like our season was the last season for like more, mostly genuine people. No, I would I would genuinely disagree really? with that. Yeah. I mean, look, you're speaking for yourself. You think you went on there for genuine reasons. Uh, and you wanted to try and love, the, find love. Yeah, Absolutely. Yes. Like applaud yes. that. Do I think other cast members you were there with were there for the same reason? Absolutely not. There was uh, people there that fucking hated each other that wrote stay every week to yeah. stay on that show. And we know you're I talking so about. Please, please. Yeah. Like it's, don't, uh, don't well, try I'm and saying, make out I'm like these mo people are. Most of our cast, I feel, was there. <laughs> yeah, well, the, most of my cast was probably there the for the Brent right reason. The Brent and Tamara yeah. thing, I completely understand that. I know you've got a lot to say about Brent because. No, uh, no, not really. I don't really care about Brent. Well. Well, yeah, I've, I know you've probably got a lot of maybe opinions about him, but I know for a fact that, yes, he was in talks with Bronte, Bronte to yeah. do a photo shoot. A photo shoot, yeah. I did hear this. But well, yeah. he just came on our podcast last week and said that he is in a relationship, so I don't understand. Well, that's, I don't know for, if that's, him just to, that's for him to try and like now. But also, why does he want to do photos with Bronte? Brent, are you joking me? Yeah. Like, She's bro. taller than you, bro. She's like 5'4". Oh, God. Jesus. Sorry, Brent. <laughs> Um, yeah, end of the day, I just don't have really much to say about you the guy. You are a cunt and I kind of like it now. <laughs> Look, I think at the end of the day, yeah, Brent, Brent, Brent has said much no, worse yeah. about me in the media and he doesn't even fucking no, know me. I, yeah, that's yeah, true. I don't even know what he said about no, you. No, he has said some fucked up shit. Yeah. I don't know. He's, and I have he's to. He's called me a manipulator and a gas, a narcissist. And I like, have Shut to. the fuck up, Brent. You don't so know me. So is everyone. Everybody has Fox called up. you this. Yeah. So. No, anyway. no, I agree to that. And I, and, but look, to be honest. I, oh, I'm going to go with him there because, look, Brent, to be honest, you've never showed me the the um, the um messages that my um OnlyFans content got leaked to you. So, I mean, and I know that you didn't talk to the police about it. So, look, that's I, not just, from me, I just, babe. I just, that's, that's not from like, from and I just don't like, I just don't like the guy. Yeah. Brent I, knows. I just don't like the guy. I, I think that he's I, trying super hard to stay relevant and I just don't like it. I mean, also, it's stupid that he goes and has photos of Bronte. Well, that's, he hasn't done know. it. It might have been said, but he didn't do it. Yeah, I know. No, I know. But like, that's a dumb decision if you're going to do it, babe. Yeah. Um, I all had a question about the butt dial. Oh. Oh, yeah. So I'm, that didn't happen. Because I haven't read anything. I don't know. That didn't fucking happen. Did I'm it sorry. Happen? Rupert got drunk, came home, got loose lipped with his wife. That's what we thought. And Amen. Then Evelyn and him cooked up this bullshit story to protect him and make it look like he didn't throw the boys under the bus. Thank you. Oh, but I and like she went Rupert. on with it. Like yeah, and she's like, I'm not a liar, Harrison. Like, well, Evelyn, you are lying. Like, so he accidentally said a bit too much, and she was like, "Babe." Well, I, said, I said at the couples oh, retreat, was so I was like, I, "It's so easy to fabricate those receipts. You just." Call someone a few times. We never saw the date on the receipts. It's just look, Babe, and it's then it's so obvious. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's no way I'm in a crowded place sitting on my ass mm. and you can hear the conversation that yeah. I'm saying. Please, I mean, I get mm. butt dialed all the time by my brother and my parents. My dad all does it the all time. the time to me. I don't so mean I nothing. Like, I actually can believe that. My mum sometimes leaves like five minute voice messages on my phone. Yeah, but and I'm like, dude, but what if are you... you're in a loud environment, mm. there's. Uh, like how many people around you? Oh, it was You're definitely. Gonna, you, we were like, well, that doesn't happen. You're not hearing specific like details. It was very hear. specific what she yeah. said. You know what I mean? Like okay. it was very. It, the, what she said was as if someone's saying it to your face. In all of the things that have never clear. happened, that never happened the most. Wow. Wait, what? I missed that. A I ball? said in, in all of the things that have never happened, that never happened the most. Okay. Wow. Evelyn's story was just to protect Rupert from Dog and the Boys, essentially. Because she said to, she would have been like, I need to tell everyone what's happened. Yeah. But what could but like, she look, just, what Evelyn's could just been there a week, yeah. right? She's like, I want to come in with a bang. Yeah. I've got all this oh, bullshit clearly. on. I've got all this dirt on uh, uh, Hugo clearly. and Dan now. And time to make a name for myself. Mm. And the thing is, of course. Evelyn and I always disagreed on this. And like, look, I like Evelyn. Mm. I like Evelyn. Mm. I think I she's feel like a good you two person. Would get on, actually. Yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Um, I went to her screening for her wedding, and yeah. she's like a lot of fun in real life. Like, she's yeah. a lot of fun. She was, um, she was standing at the top. I had the roof off on my Jeep, 
and she was standing out the roof of the Jeep um, going like this down William Street in the city, like fucking, I don't know, midnight or whatever. And I was like, I'm losing my license for this. Far <laughs> <laughs> out. Um, pretty funny. Um, so the thing was that Evelyn had come across this information, cooked up this kind of like story about how she'd come across it to protect Rupert and, and then the, came and the in and bang, tried to... to destroy two relationships, right? And that is that is a producer's dream, dream. right? Yeah. But the thing was I didn't destroy Jesse and Claire's relationship because I didn't like Claire. I did it because I was protecting Jesse from getting strung on because he was developing like actual – feelings even though he was scared of it mm. he was starting to go through the motions he's a very emotionally deep guy mm. he thinks a lot about stuff he felt felt a lot of guilt around being wrong about calling claire yeah. out yeah but we also like, saw claire so treat him like shit as well saying there's that he's so much his... stuff that you don't see and i want to get to that actually um so then i keep losing my train of thought um so i did that for genuinely the love of jesse i'm like i've come across this truth he mm. needs to hear it and i didn't want to do it at the dinner table i didn't want to do it in front of the group mm. and directly to but claire was, yeah, you but the thing of... was is i was sitting there and everyone was attacking my relationship i was on my own Claire was always coming for me. Mm. And I was like, bro, shut the fuck up. Mm. You are so fake. Mm. You are stringing him along. You've cheated. You've mm. lied. Like You are, in my estimation, on the show, a terrible person. Mm. And I'm going to give you some home truths. Mm. If you're coming for me, expect it back. Mm. That is fair. I don't mm. think that's there's anything, fair. And there's nothing wrong yeah. with that. It's yeah. like, uh, that's what you're that. there for. I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I didn't see in real anything life, wrong look, with that. Look, I just want to go over that again. I don't think Claire is a terrible person in real life. Mm. I think how she behaved on the show was trash. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to call it and out. And why do yeah. that though? Like, uh, what are yeah. you going to get out of being a, a fucking asshole on TV? Yeah. That's what I don't understand. Yeah. That's what. That's why yeah. I came in here thinking. And in all of my radio interviews, you. I've sort of like run Claire down a little bit. But you've got to remember that's promoting the show, right? This isn't yeah. promoting the show. This is my time to no. talk. Yeah. And I don't yeah. actually no, have anything right. against any of these people. Yeah. Um, do I think Claire's a bad person or not? No, I've, I've kind of covered that. And the kiss. We but want I, to know, did everybody know before it came out? No. No. So uh, Bronte, Lyndall, Sandy knew. Oh. Or the, the, the girl the click, the, the, the ex-tattoo yeah. girls, they all knew. Oh. They all knew. They knew because Bronte didn't. and Claire went to Manly like a week after this happened or whatever and she told her there. Oh my so Bronte God. and – so the thing is, Lyndall wanted to be a voice for like um, – a voice for like what's moral in the experiment. Yeah. Bro, you condone cheating and then mm. you sat there and watched people gaslight Jesse and call him crazy oh, and you only said enough oh. to throw Adam under the bus for the kiss. Mm. Why not throw Claire wow. under there too? Lyndall is a female chauvinist. Whoa. Yes. Interesting. Wow. Okay. That's fucked. She yeah. sat there and let... Let it happen. Claire, same with Sandy all... and same with Bronte. Whoa. So if you wonder why, I don't like that. if I you don't wonder, like that. if you wonder why I don't respect their behavior on the show, mm. that is the core reason. They sat there knowingly watching Jesse burn in front of the group and supported oh. it, and only attacked Adam. Mm. Where was the vitriol for Claire's behavior? Mm. So when people ask me why the girls are getting a good edit or they're getting off scot-free, yeah. these are why I say it, right. these reasons. Yeah, I because can't... I feel like the hypocrisy and double standard for mm. my season of Married at First Sight is absolutely out of this world. Mm -hmm. They have carried no responsibility, no accountability, and their their behaviour has not been shown in its true light. Do you know what? Here's my observation mm. from all of this, knowing this information now too mm. as well is, these girls clearly wanted to come out of this. Like apparently they're moving to Sydney now. They obviously mm. want to be someone, okay, yeah. or something, Good luck. okay. Yeah. So the thing is, right? They obviously they went on the show thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna have the girls back because that's gonna be the right thing. Actually, girls, what you should have done was called out the fucking shitty behaviour and actually seen what they were doing to Jesse as the completely wrong thing. Because mm. you've just said that that's okay for your girlfriends to fucking hide shit for you. Yeah. No, because I'm telling you right now, if I knew my girlfriend was yeah. doing something, I'd be calling that shit out. Yeah. That's the right thing to that's do. That's the right thing. Do you understand there. why I roll my eyes now when people say the boy club? Like the guys never. I actually approached Adam and we got into quite a heated confrontation over what he'd done to Jesse, I went straight to Adam's room and we had a big blow up and then the, another blow up at the boys' night over it because mm. Jesse wasn't there. And a lot of that didn't get shown. Again, no context for yeah. me sticking up yeah, for Jesse, right? Yeah, like yeah. They, they never showed. It was all on camera. 
Yeah. They never yeah. show any of, of that, course, me sticking up for Jess. Yeah. They you want you laughing it's when... It's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. I went down to Adam's room the second I found out, before I even talked to Claire. Mm. He's a piece of the shit. The second I found yeah. out and was like, mate, I think you're a snake. I think you're a dog for what you've done to Jesse. Mm. You're dead to me in here. Like you're out of the boys group. Mm. Right? It's a dog cunt act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like I wasn't afraid to call out my, my gender and the opposing genders. Mm. But we never like we never hear about that. It's all just like makes me look like I'm attacking Claire. Well, no, I said the same thing to Adam. So it's um it's just interesting to me that again, like the girls knew they hid it, they helped hide it, they condoned it. Mm. And like they're they're getting they're getting like oh, these great edits. That. And the guys that called out their own mates for the bullshit, it's not even showing. Like it's not fair. Mm. It's really not fair. And again, because of that, I have real issues with how the network has cut up this season yeah. because I feel like if they'd shown me in my complete light being authentic, holding people to account and yeah. owning my own behavior, there's a lot of my accountability yeah. that they've cut. Like it would have been a completely different, you know, oh, season yeah. for me. So, look, we've we've covered a lot. Yeah, we have this really. Time. We've I've, really covered I a lot. I want you to so be is, a three-parter. Yeah, you <laughs> might have to be. Is there anything yeah. that you want to end on? Like, I mean, I I want to give you and I know to all the haters that are saying you're giving Harrison a platform, you know what? Yeah, I I, I think right it's now. All, it's th- not all about interviewing people you like, is it? No, no. exactly. And, and I think after this, this conversation, we kind of, we, we, we feel like we can do that yeah, now. Yeah. I, I want to give you this yeah. moment to say what you want to say and I, I I want to. So is there, what do you want to end this on, Harrison? Like, what do you want to say? such an amazing question. I kind of wish I'd prepared something <laughs> more profound. <laughs> Um, look, I just think take the season of maths with a grain of salt. There is real people behind everything that you see. Mm. You see a highly edited version of a TV show. And that just doesn't go for me. That goes for the entire cast. Mm. My friends that were on that show, a lot of people have been in what I think is kind of an unfairly bashed for some stuff that happened or didn't happen that you see or don't see and just take it's entertainment. It's a show that's cut for entertainment. It's not a documentary. If we watched yeah. it as a documentary, it would documentary. be boring as fuck, mm. right? It would. So this season, you ain't learning nothing on this also, doco, maths. Also, <laughs> can I just say that this season actually would have been boring without you? And I know that's a br- like well, a yeah. really big, it actually would have Thank because you. you made even though I even though it was fucking, toxic, even and, though I couldn't stand watching you, yeah, <laughs> and ha- and you like, loved to hate me. But that's what makes this kind of TV good, right? Like yeah. our season, you know, you and Olivia and your feuds, that was yeah. very toxic. Yeah. It was but very That was toxic. I don't see what's happening this season as, as toxic. No. I, because to be honest with you, I think they were both both at fault. Yeah. And Yes. But at the end of the day, I mean, it would have been fucking boring. Yeah. Can but I just there's end, a lot of them that are boring. Can I just yes. end by saying um that I really appreciate the space and the opportunity to come in and talk to you guys. Um, obviously huge fans of you guys from watching the show and, and absolute pleasure to be here and meet you in, in, in person. And, um, and just, just thank you for the opportunity to sit down and, and not feel judged or, um, you know, I, I haven't felt like you've really been confrontational. I feel like you've actually listened to what I have to say. And mm. a lot of people haven't afforded me those opportunities. So yeah. I just want to say, I really respect that. And thank mm. you so much. No, and I think for us as well, like we probably come from more of an understanding position compared to other people that may interview or talk to you because we've been there mm. and we also lived it. We watched it. We know how much does, doesn't get shown. Yeah. So for us, we weren't getting you on here to everyone's like, you're going to grill him. It was more like, yeah, look, we're going to ask him the real shit. We're going we to ask him. You know, we did. Yeah. And coming into this, you know, we copped a lot of shit. Yeah. Like, like Harrison, <laughs> the last two days, we copped a lot of shit. Like you're getting this piece of shit on, like. But you know what? Like our poor moderator in our Facebook group, Amelia, we know she listens. <laughs> and I said this from my She's math just days. They're rocking. Now. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, I've said this from my math days as well. And I, and I hope you can take some something from this as well, Harrison. Mm. Is having the courage to be mm-hmm. disliked in life is a fucking strength like yeah. no other. Mm-hmm. And I and I know that you have that in you. And I want you to know that it's actually going to be okay. Mm. And you'll you'll fucking get through this, man. Like it's it's a it's a raindrop in the fucking ocean or whatever that saying is. You yeah. know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, I'm really really proud and happy that we've had you on. Yeah, me and too. that you've had Thank the you. opportunity yeah. to chat. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Because Thank you. I have, and I'm going to say this, guys. I've seen a different side to Harrison, and I really hope that everyone 
has as well. Yeah. I mean, I came into this being like, I didn't even want to hug you downstairs in the lobby. <laughs> yeah. If I'm honest, I was yeah. like, like uh, cold, cold hug. <laughs> <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't saying that. It was an ass out hug. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's still got an ego the size yes. of the fucking elephant. And, <laughs> yes. you know, I, you know, not saying we love him. Yeah. But, but we're saying we got, we got to hear his side. It may have swayed yeah. us, you know, more than what we probably expected. Yeah. Um, and look, you guys as listeners, obviously we're all entitled to our own opinions. We didn't get him on here to sway yours. You can do exactly. whatever you want with your opinion. But we just wanted to see his side and speak more to him yeah. about his experiences and yeah, what's been going so on. So thank you for coming yeah. in, thank Harrison. You. It's been really great. Thank you very much. Yeah.